Well, one more video, I think. We can wrap this up for class 25, the last class of material for this semester. We're talking about turbines, and I figured I'd want to talk about two main types of turbines uh, just to wrap things up and tie it into some thermodynamics. Whereas in the previous discussion for this class, we were talking about hydro turbines, stuff that you'd probably find in a, uh, a hydroelectric power plant. Uh, we also have uh, other types of turbines, and so I spend a lot of time working on steamships. Uh, they're not a lot around, but they still have steam plants and the shoreside steam plants, many different types um, for uh, e even, um, you, you know, and, and when it comes down to it, nuclear power plants are steam, steam uh, plants. So uh, here's your from uh, thermodynamics and also uh, Sengel's, I think this is actually a, a different uh, a book by the same author as our fluids book. Um, here's a uh, so semi-complicated uh, steam plant cycle where we have, because uh, we are taking uh, extraction steam in the middle of the turbine and using it to uh, heat um, the feed water. And so we have uh, uh, a, a more complicated Rankine cycle here, but it's pr pretty standard to have at least some amount of uh, um, extraction steam. And in a real uh, plant, by the way, you would have uh, this line wouldn't be straight up and down because this is an adiabatic uh, process on a TS diagram. It would have a slope to it right there because we would be gaining entropy as we went onto there. But there you could see here's the, these are lines of constant pressure um, as we uh, get rid of the latent heat of vaporization here to condense uh, the steam. So, but anyway, uh, you should be uh, familiar with this, but um, in terms of like fluid mechanics, we can't just use fluid mechanics uh, alone. We need to have thermodynamics. There's things, uh, that there, there's heat processes that are taking place at the same time as mechanical processes that we usually associate with fluid mechanics. Here's an actual, um, I didn't, I, I left off the name of the ship that it was on, but this is a heat balance where, um, and one, that I think that I did calculate this, but I'm not 100% sure. I think these are my uh, uh, values in, in my drawing. Um, but you can get an idea that we have a high pressure turbine and a low pressure turbine, and this main condenser. Uh, there's other uh, processes going on in here, like an air ejection, which helps to maintain the vacuum in the condenser. Um, and then going through various different uh, uh, stages of uh, heating for the uh, feed water. But here's the main one here is coming out, or, or a really important one, is that if off of the low pressure turbine, there's a bleed. And so here's heating up that stage. So that's This is actually... Um, very much uh, similar to what's going on right here, right? So there, here's, a, here's a real plant uh, and the values associated with it. Uh, we also have um, steam that can be, can be extracted. Sometimes it isn't, but in this case it is being extracted from in between the HP and the LP turbine, um, the, this crossover bleed. And they use that in the uh, deaerating feed heater, which is a direct contact feed heating where we're putting the steam directly in with the feed water and going to the feed pumps and then uh, um, uh, going back up into the boiler and therefore we have a cycle. And there's a bunch of other secondary loops and so forth things going on right here. And when we call it a heat balance, it's a mass balance and a heat balance to try to account for where all the steam is uh, and its flow and its uh, enthalpy drops across things. So that was a big part of my life at one point. Here's uh, some details. I think these, this is coming out of Harrington's Marine Engineering book. Uh, of a high pressure uh, steam turbine where we have uh, multiple blades uh, coming on. Well, actually, here's the here's the main nozzle uh, coming through, and we have all these different stages. Stage one, two, three, four, and then we come out. We do this crossover into the um, low pressure turbine uh, right here, where we have uh, multiple stages that it comes through and then exhausts down into the condenser. We also, interestingly enough, we have a, uh, a stern 
um, uh, stages. So if we want to go backwards, uh, and reverse the, the propeller direction, you, know, you actually have a throttle that comes in and goes through these stages right here, these stern stages. And it's only, there's only like two of them, so it's not a very efficient turbine. But um, by having multiple stages here, we, we can get closer and closer uh, to a, uh, uh, a uh, you know, it's not, it, it, it's a less steep, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, um, descent here as we go from uh, uh, the inlet of the turbine to the outlet of the turbine at eight. All right, um, here's some more pictures. Uh, so this is the steam path. And in interesting enough, we have impulse turbines to st uh, start with. So that's one of the reasons why I brought this up is to show that we, we these impulse turbines, they're not just related to uh, the, the Pelton and the Francis uh, hydro, tur hydro turbines, but they also have those same ideas take place in steam turbines where you have a, a section of different stages uh, in the, this is in the low pressure turbine where we have um, Im, uh, uh, impulse turbines. And you can see by the, the shape of the blades that these are impulse stage turbines, where um, as we get later on in here, we now have reaction turbines uh, right there. Because you can see the uh, blades now have a, uh, a, a little more of a shape to them as opposed to just being uh, um, a constant area uh, throughout the process. And then you also see that we have uh, impulse turbines in the uh, uh, astern, uh, only impulse turbines in the uh, astern. And here is uh, some reaction nozzles, and you can kind of see a little up close uh, these blades. Um, and from this is where we make the velocity triangles that are, are really important uh, in, in planning out what these angles are. But they are very much related to uh, the relative velocity. So they're, they're rel the angles are related to uh, um, the speed, right? The, the optimum angle the, to choose, you need to choose the, the speed for which it's going to be, you know, designed. Um, that might not be the fastest speed. It might be like somewhere in the middle or up in the upper middle would be what, what you were, we're trying to get that, uh, uh, the, the approach angle to be just correct. Um, uh, so that when the, when it reaches the, the rotor blades, it's going to be like tangent to the arc of this. Um, gas turbines, all right, and this is also this additional information, um, they operate on the Brayton cycle as opposed to the Rankine cycle in steam plants. And we have a compressor turbine, we have a combustion chamber, uh, no, excuse me, we have a compressor, I should not, not a turbine, it's a compressor. Um, and we go through a combustion chamber with where we add fuel, we set it on fire, increase the temperature, and then we extract out that energy uh, and uh, create power. So on a TS diagram, we could see, uh, by the way, the, the other one was an HS diagram. We usually use an HS diagram for, uh, for steam, uh, for the steam plant for the, on the Rankin cycle, but with it, and that's called a Moliere chart. But here we have a TS diagram. We could see that for the compressor, we raise the temperature in the compressor. Um, let's see if I'm saying this correctly. And then across, uh, we, uh, by, and we raise the pressure and the temperature in the compressor. And then we, uh, on, on a line of constant pressure across the combustion chamber, we increase the temperature. And then through the turbine, we extract out uh, work uh, and power. Um, and these, di these, these as well, uh, we'll have an angle to them usually like more like that right there and like that right there right so uh because these are uh, what the, what's being showed on uh, ts diagram are adiabatic processes and here's some uh i think this is from a ge manual uh that i got years ago uh it's old uh, uh information perhaps but the, showing the 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 changes in temp and, and pressure and velocity as and temperature um, through different stages and so here is the compressor and uh, the combustion chamber and then here's the turbine and this is uh, through a jet engine 
uh, sort of an aircraft uh, engine because uh, you could tell because this turbine its entire purpose in this turbine is to drive this compressor right and then the rest of it is really just a nozzle that's creating thrust right here as opposed to a shore side and oh no this let me see if i'm going to say this correct no i do believe this is a shore side uh, version of this uh yeah, of this right so this is this is a very 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 common aircraft derivative uh, turbine the uh, general electric GE LM 2500 this thing has been around for like 40 50 years um, and has been uh, upgraded and upgraded throughout the years and probably the one that I've, I've been on ships the most amount of ships uh, have had the LM 2500 uh, here is uh, so but this is a power plant version of the thing because so, this is the compressor turbine that's sole purpose is to drive uh the compressor right whereas this is the power turbine which will have an, an output right there so in the previous one that we're looking at here this didn't have a power turbine it was just this this turbine's uh uh its sole purpose was to drive the compressor. But here what we do is we take the compress, uh, we, we, we take some power uh, or extraction out, take, take some, of, some of the energy out and use it to, to drive the compressor. And then the rest of it gets, uh, well, not the rest of it, but a lot of it gets used to uh, uh, drive whatever the thing we're driving is. And it could be the, the shaft or it could be a generator, um, whatever it might be. So here you go. This is um, once again. This is, this compressor is merely to turn the, uh, the the excuse me. This turbine is merely to turn the compressor, and then the the exhaust from that is used for thrust. Here's some um, more breakdowns. I do believe this is out of a GE manual. Uh, once again, and just breaking the thing down into the gas generator section and then the power turbine section. So once again, the, they're they're making a distinction about like everything over to here. Everything in this range is really what gets used as a jet engine, right? So before, uh, and they call this an aircraft, an aero derivative uh, design because right up to like right up there. The rest was a was used as a jet engine, but then they slapped on this power turbine section, and now they can use it to drive uh, um, whatever you want to drive. Uh, so there you go. Here's the compressor, and some interesting things or things I decided to include. Some of the reasons I decided to include this section was just to give you some more practical application or things. Uh, notably, um, we have uh, a means. Of adjusting the 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 veins, right? So uh, as I was mentioning before, if you want to have when when designing uh, a turbine and uh, trying to get the optimum angle, it you you, you well ha the angle at which that you are uh, leaving uh, the nozzle veins or the guide veins, um, the they are going to be dependent if you want to have an optimized they're dependent on the relative velocity so because the thing is moving at different rpms there's going to be different relative velocities so to account for that you can uh, uh turn the veins have the veins so that they're they're adjustable and they can be moved so that you can optimize uh that angle of approach onto the blades as they're as they're moving at different rpms um also wanted to include the combustion chamber uh this is sort of a ge type over here where we have they're kind of like uh, uh they call it like an annulus right here you can see that they're uh two different uh uh shapes the inlet and the uh no we shouldn't say the inlet uh we also have air that's actually starts to come in through uh through here right while well, you were seeing it right there air is coming through in there and then there's a you know fire right in there so the air is mixing uh right here for good combustion but it also there's way more air than is necessary for combustion to cool it down 
Um, this is a different approach is to use these cans instead of having like this annulus. Um, this is more of the uh, Pratt Whitney uh, uh, style as my, uh, uh, my understanding, as opposed to this being some more of a GE type of style. Uh, we have the compressor turbine, right? And that's the turbine that's just simply dedicated to uh, uh, driving the compressor. Uh, this is one of the most sensitive uh, locations on a uh, uh, in, in a uh, in a gas turbine because that's where the highest amount of temperature these these are the the, uh, the rotor blades that are experiencing the highest temperatures and and for, for it, many ways limits what the what the maximum temperature that you could be because we don't want to melt these so quite a, there's a lot of technology that has gone involved uh, into making these uh, uh, increasing what the possible temperature that you can have in a gas turbine is based really on that first stage more than anything else and you can even see some of the tricks that they use is to actually send air that they've bled off from the compressor and feed it through little tiny holes in these uh, in these blades to be able to keep them cool so that you can increase what the maximum temperature is because as you go back to the foundation here, the higher you can make this temperature right here, the more power that you're going to be able to get out of your gas turbine. So it's very motivated to uh, concentrate on that stage of uh, your development. And then they have the power turbine, which also, you know, we want to keep these. So I actually, I think this figure needs to be on that previous slide right there yeah so you can see here's a united technologies corporation uh high pressure turbine uh blades uh showing these little cooling little passages uh that they actually put inside and then, and then different material technology is also contributed to how uh high to how high of a temperature you can get away with in those blades so, but here's the power turbine section. And then once again, we go back to velocity triangles. And then once again, this is what I, one of the reasons why I decided to include some of the slides dealing with steam turbines and gas turbines, because we were relevant to uh, these, these triangles, velocity triangles being a really necessary part of turbo machinery, uh, uh, studying turbo machinery. And you can see uh, that so some of the relative velocity uh, uh, things that need to go, these are all relative velocity uh, uh, d directions right here so that they can, uh, we can enter in at just the correct angle uh, of approach uh, that the blade sees as it's moving around. Um, I could included a bunch of other pictures that I thought were either relevant or interesting. Um, here's another one where we can show uh, that these stator vanes and how they are changing their angles, right? That these can rotate. Um, this one actually might not rotate that front one, maybe not. But that these things w uh, w uh, are meant to rotate so that they can improve the angle uh, this angle right here because this angle is a relative of velocity angle so it's dependent on the speed of these stages which are also you know they're all on the same shaft so uh but they have different you know interesting they have they have different radii uh because you you notice that this is at least in this case we could kind of see it like right? these are getting smaller the the radius outwards to there it gets smaller as the because you're compressing it so it's actually getting uh, d denser so you need to have a uh, a smaller and smaller uh, uh, diameter radius I guess uh, as you go past uh, through different stages um, on shore side gas turbines are always enclosed in a big box and you never really go inside that box all that much. It's really the guys that are specialized maintenance people are uh, go inside. So it's it's never all that exciting. You don't really see the gas turbine uh, very often in most installations. It's really kind of hidden away inside. Um, this is, uh, uh, I think this is with the out exterior uh, removed from one. I'm, look at all the piping and tubing and stuff. It's cool. But you can see this, this like, a little rack right here that that's a part of the control i'm pretty sure at least uh that helped to change those guide vane angles 
Uh, this is like an installation on board some ship somewhere. Or actually, this might be, a, it looks like a generator. Is this looking like maybe a generator? I don't know. This, this is, uh, uh, you know, gas turbines move very, very fast RPMs. Uh, and so actually need to be slowed down even for generators, but slowed down a lot with reduction gears. Um, there's one I always thought was interesting is that we uh, remove the gas turbine right out, out from, from, the, uh, from the stack right there. I think it's the stack. That might be the intake. It's the intake housing, not to there, right? They, but they can be taken apart. Um, aircraft, because uh, I know there's aerospace engineers in our fluids class. Uh, here's some uh, a very common design right here where we have the exhaust c coming down right there. So it's like a, a turbo prop, right? And we have a a, a gear, well, also a reduction gear right here, because or or. Might not have to be a reduction gear, but it doesn't. That doesn't look like a reduction gear. But one thing to note is that the uh, you know a propeller doesn't need to go nearly as fast as the gas turbine uh, uh, will drive it. And so here is a, uh, a, a animation, at least of a, of a turbo prop uh, that you might uh, experience. And then I uh, have a turbo jet. Right, and those are pretty cool. Right, so you might even have an afterburner might inject some fuel into here and it ignited it, it, you get some boost uh, going that way and uh, and then we have a turbo fan this is very this is what we usually have on big uh, jet aircraft right just like the the aircraft that you fly usually this is this makes them seem kind of uh, uh, not quite a, these proportions but what we have is we often call this the bypass ratio right because there's some air coming in through here and out um, and causing and, and this causes thrust and then we also have an inside uh, path right there which is going through the gas turbine right so this external one uh, so these these um, blades right there they're they are doing a little bit of help to get the the mass flow coming through into the input stages of the compress the first stage of the compressor but they're mostly driving air uh, um, through the bypass of this um, and you don't really see that through the nacelle uh, right there. All right here, here's I liked this one better because it, it gives you a better idea of how much, like the bypass ratio can be really large, right? Which is the, the ratio of the uh, external air to the to the internal air, which is coming through this gas turbine. Right? I love that that way right there is the path. It's another cool picture. I like the picture. But you get the idea of the, 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 the gas turbine right there and then you could get just the idea of some of those of uh, them by the, having the dude inside yeah yeah I liked that one that's a good one right there and that's that's a huge amount of bypass uh, ratio coming up right through there um, but there you go there's uh, uh, turbines and uh, I think it's a pretty cool topic and uh, that is the end of class 25